Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing off some of the incredible updates we've been given in the latest Yuzu Patreon preview, as well as a brand new mod for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening that basically completely fixes all of the depth of field blurring issues that were present in the game before this. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find this mod file download. All you need to do is download it, right click your game in your Yuzu games list, select open mod directory and then extract that mod file there. Once extracted into that directory, all you have to do is once again right click your game, select properties and simply toggle this modification on in that properties window. Once you've done that and load into game, you are going to get the exact same visual experience that you're seeing in gameplay right now on Yuzu Emulator. I think we can all agree that it is a much more playable experience versus what we previously had with this horrible broken depth of field and blurring effect. As of right now, if you wish to play The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the only way to do so is on this Patreon preview build, but as with all previous changes that have been in Patreon previews, these changes will be merged to Yuzu's main versions in the next few days. Now, you may also have noticed that there have been some changes to how Yuzu works in the last few days. This is mainly because the Yuzu dev team have completely gotten rid of Yuzu Nightly and Yuzu Canary, replacing it with one stable branch simply titled Yuzu. If you can't wait the 8 or 9 days that it usually takes for these changes to get merged into this Yuzu build, you can simply head on over to Yuzu's Patreon page, pledge or donate to support this emulator's development and you will get immediate access to these early access builds as soon as any of them release. You'll find a link to that Patreon down in the description of this video. Now, not only have we seen huge improvements to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, we've also seen improvements to loads of other games, for example, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, Crash Team Racing, and many others. So let's move along and take a look at some of those other changes, starting things off with a fan favorite, Astral Chain. This game has gone from showing a single loading icon in the bottom right hand corner to actually rendering 3D as you can see in this introduction sequence to the game. Unfortunately, when you do press ZL and ZR as it says on screen, you get a saving icon and the game will unfortunately freeze when trying to create a giant texture. Upon further testing and importing of a save from my Nintendo Switch, I was able to successfully load to the title screen bypassing that intro, but again unfortunately when I tried to load in game it did the exact same thing, it just completely freezes and crashes the emulator trying to create the same giant textures. Apparently there are also some driver related issues that cause this game to crash, so hopefully once all of those are solved this game will become super playable on this awesome emulator. For now though, let's move on to our next title and a game I know a lot of you are dying to play on Yuzu, Fire Emblem Three Houses. This game has seen an enormous performance boost in this new Patreon preview, making its frame rate jump from around 1 or 2 frames per second up to very playable frame rates of between 25 to 30 at least on my very high end system. Render quality wise it is very good however you can see as with previews I've given you in the past it is slightly discolored. We'll talk a little bit about how to fix fix that and what you can expect in the future in just a moment. Staying on this Patreon preview though, you can see again we have some graphical issues with these black boxes around characters and when you go into certain modes or 3D model views, our performance drops down from a locked 30 to around 20 to 24 frames per second. Playable performance in my mind but it may not be to you. If you were playing this game on this Patreon preview and you were experiencing any crashes in these battle areas, please make sure to update your GPU driver be it Intel, AMD or Nvidia. I know for a fact that on older Nvidia GPU drivers this game is going to softlock and crash in all of these battle areas so as I said please make sure to update your GPU drivers for the best possible experience. Now in relation to the graphical corruptions take a look at this. So here we have the graphics as presented in this current Patreon preview build. 
and it's very clear to see that the character models are not being correctly rendered. If you look closely, you can also see that the transparency is broken on all of the foliage and trees in the area. However, thanks to an upgrade given to us by Yuzu developer Rodrigo, these character discoloration issues and foliage transparency problems are now completely solved. While these fixes are not present in the current Patreon preview, expect all of these fixes to be merged to the main branch of Yuzu Emulator in the coming days. Now, in relation to the playability of Fire Emblem Three Houses, it does seem to be playable without any discernible crashes. It does have a lot of audio issues, which I'm now just going to quickly show you how you can easily fix. Okay, so with the stock settings of Fire Emblem Three Houses, this is what the game sounds like. I think we can all agree that that sound level is pretty terrible and basically unplayable. However, take a listen to this. Again, I think we can all agree that that is much better, and to change your audio so it sounds just like this, all that you have to do is come to this system settings tab in the battle screen or the main pause menu, come to general, and make your sound settings something very similar to this. The main issue with Fire Emblem Three Houses audio is the fact that the SFX volume is way too loud at stock, and due to the mixing issues present in the current form of Yuzu emulator, it makes the sound in the game completely unplayable. Unfortunately, these settings are not going to apply straight away when you change them in the menu, so unfortunately you are going to have to skip to the next day or scenario in order for them to correctly apply. Now, on top of these audio issues, Fire Emblem Three Houses isn't rendered perfectly at all. For example, in the gameplay you can see now we have this strange blue haze that appears in front of the player character. This is unfortunately not fixed at all at this point in time. As with the battle scenario we saw earlier on, this strange black flickering box also appears in front of character models in regular gameplay. So as with all of the other issues I've just listed, these issues are going to have to be fixed in order for this game to be considered perfectly emulated. Regardless of any of those issues though, I think we can all agree that Yuzu's development team have done an outstanding job at getting this game into a playable state in this new update. For now though, let's move on to our next title for improvement, another game that a lot of people want on the PC platform, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Again, thanks to the changes we've seen to Fire Emblem Three Houses and Link's Awakening, this title has seen a significant improvement in both performance and render quality on this new Yuzu update. Similarly enough to Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy, it also has pretty severe shadow issues. You can see they are completely misaligned and rendered all over the screen at times. And this game, similar to Fire Emblem Three Houses, requires some pretty weird workarounds to even get it to render properly in-game in a race like you can see right now. Basically, what you have to do is enter every single race in undocked mode, then swap to docked mode using the F10 key on your keyboard. Once in docked mode, you have to go to emulation, configure the graphics tab, and enable accurate GPU emulation, enter back into game, then once in game, you disable accurate GPU emulation. This is going to give you the exact same render output you can see that I have right now, Obviously, it's not the best workaround, but if you are desperate to play this game or just want to test it out on a Yuzu emulator, this, at this point in time, is the only way you're going to be able to do so. I know that obviously 99% of you are not going to do this at all, but for the 1% that are interested in experimenting with emulators and finding strange and kooky ways of getting games to work, I thought I would include these instructions. With Crash Team Racing Nitro Kart not being available, on PC, hopefully we can get this game up and running very soon on Yuzu, especially so since there is in fact a 60 frames per second patch for this game available for the Switch, which paired with the additional performance levels we may be able to squeeze out of this game in its emulated form, may allow us to play this game at a much higher level of performance than you can on the original hardware. For now though, let's move on to our final game of this new upgrades video, yet another game in the Fire Emblem saga, Fire Emblem Warriors. Again, thanks to all of the recent improvements, this title now goes in-game and renders its graphics very, very well. 
One thing I do want to say for NVIDIA GPU users is that if you want to boot this game at all, you are required to disable NVIDIA threaded optimization as it just will not go past its title screen if you do not disable it. This is an NVIDIA driver issue which has thankfully already been reported so it's likely going to be fixed in the next few driver releases. As with Fire Emblem Three Houses, the graphics in Fire Emblem Warriors are also fixed with the brand new update I previously showcased. So as I said, in respect to that update, expect these fixes to all be merged to the mainline release of Yuzu in the next few days or so. If this project's developers are to be believed, we can expect even more improvements on these current changes once everything does get merged to the mainline versions, so I'm super excited to see what they are cooking up for us in the future of this emulator's development. For now, that's going to be it for this video. As always guys, if there are any games that you would like to see me test out on this brand new update, please let me know down below in a comment or over on my Discord server, and if I have access to that game or if I can pick it up for cheap, I will test it out for you absolutely and no problem at all. Before I go, I want to give another massive, massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are awesome, helping me to pay for things like my internet bills, electricity bills, water bills, and for every single game I require for testing. So if anybody out there would like to help to support my channel, please consider heading to the Patreon link down below and pledging or donating to support. As I always say, these pledges or donations are not a requirement at all to get help from me here on YouTube or over on my Discord server, but they are massively appreciated and really do help with the maintenance and running of this channel. So to all of my past, present and indeed potential future supporters, thank you guys very, very much. If there was any information that I conveyed in this video that still confuses you, please don't be afraid to ask me in a comment down below or again over on my Discord. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving it a like. And if you enjoy these types of videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I make a new video upload. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.